Well, hello, boys and girls. I'm Pearl of Wisdom, and you're listening to my NHL Pearls of Wisdom, coming to you live from the offices of Steel Flyers All Sports Network to pay my bills. It's a great website. Go check it out. Steel Flyers All Sports Network. It's not about Flyers. It's about all sports, all teams, all the time. I'm the hockey. I'm one of the hockey guys for that. And today we are going to be talking about where Ryan Suter goes now. We just did a video on Ryan Suter and Parise and what it means for the Minnesota Wild to be making the uh, decision that they did to buy them out. Might want to check that video out. Pretty exciting stuff. I put it over on Facebook with the uh, for the Minnesota Wild groups, and we're having some pretty heated discussions. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it was basically about the possibility that they could be looking at Eichel now even more so than before. A lot of them think no. A lot of people don't like the idea of getting Eichel. And uh, we can talk about that in the comment section if you want. But we're going to continue here. You can also talk about it at the NHL Pearl O Wisdom Show, which on Tuesday and Thursdays happens between 7.30 and 9.30 Eastern, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday between 3.30 and 5.30 Eastern. And that is so much frolic. So much frolic. You'll just go. You'll do this. This is the Perlo dance. That's that's what people do on that show. Just That's how it came to be. And if you hit the subscribe button and hit the bell, I'll send you a Pearls of Wisdom necklace. And I'm going to tell you right now, it was the Perlo copter, but we're going to, we're going to be lining ourselves up with the jet o frolic because there's so many that have to go out to the land that we can't even keep up. Okay, so we're going to look at Suter. Some of the places he may go. I think I have six teams for you here that he may go to. All right, so let's get to it right now. The first place we're going to go is... The first one, that, first of all, we'll look at Suter's stats a little bit. Then we're going to go to the first team, which makes kind of sense because the person who's managing this team now is the person that gave them this contract that just got bought out. So he might kind of like that guy. Let's go over and look at it. Okay, this, as you see in front of you right now, is Gary Suter and his stats and what he has done in his career. Uh, Ryan Suter, I shouldn't say. His father's name is Gary. Jeez, Ryan Suter. Um, I just did something where I called Van, Van Riemsdyk Van, Riem, Van Beesbrook like three times in the video. But I didn't change it because this is a one-time take thing. All right. Ryan Suter, Madison, Wisconsin. That's going to be important. Uh, one of the reasons why... He mentioned when he signed in Minnesota that he signed there was that he liked to be close to home. Wisconsin is right there. He's got three beautiful children, a wife and three beautiful children. Apparently, when Garen gave them the call that they bought him out, he hung up the phone on Bill Garen. He's very upset about this. He doesn't want to leave Minnesota. So keep that in mind as we're looking at teams that he may go to. Uh, he's 36 years old, still got a lot of legs left, as we'll see as we look at his stats here now. Um, this is the big contract. He signed it in 2012. It was a 13-year contract, absolutely enormous contract at the time. In fact, you can't even make contracts like this anymore. It's illegal. It was back-loaded or front-loaded, uh, kind of cap super uh, circumvention type thing. And uh, he never made it, and neither did Parise. But um, now, so he has, for his career, 607 points, 1,198 games. And here's the thing about Suter. He has only missed, if you look down here, look, 82, 82, 82. Shortened season, 48, 79, 78. He plays a full season just about every single season. He played 56 games last year. Yes, his point production dipped a little bit last year. His role's kind of changing, 
but he still plays solid defense, still plays very smart hockey, still a very effective player in the league. So with all that in mind, let's look at our first team. As I mentioned, the Philadelphia Flyers. Chuck Fletcher is the general manager I was referring to that gave him this contract to begin with. Now, Philadelphia, the Philadelphia Flyers don't check off every box here. They don't have a lot of cap space. Um, I think, I guess one thing we should talk about quick is the number that might be looking at here for Ryan Suter. I think the Ryan Suter number is going to be right around what Duncan Keith's number is right now. Somewhere around four to five million dollars. Five million being the likely one. Still getting that at 36 years old for a two year deal. And we'll see why as we go through this. Now, the Philadelphia Flyers, their problem is cap space. They only have $13 million worth of cap space. They got to sign Carter Hart. Um, they're trying to find a home for Voracek to make up room. Uh, and I think I did a video on this too, by the way. If you'll check that out, that video out, um, about where Jacob Voracek might go and what they might have to do to get rid of it. So if they get rid of that, and you can go watch the video on how I show that he, they can get rid of it, um, then they've got a little more cap space, and they're going to have to get a left defenseman here. They lost Niskin in last year. It was a big loss for them. They couldn't seem to recuperate from it. Shane Gostaspear had a better year last year, but I don't think he want to roll the dice on that. And having a good, solid defensive defenseman like Ryan Suter in this lineup would be enormous. The where it doesn't check off, it's pretty far from Wisconsin. I don't know if they're going to be able to pull off the, a $5 million. But I wonder if Chuck Fletcher can spin it and say, look, we gave you like $98 million. <laughs> I already gave you $98 million. Can you do me a solid here and pull it out for like three and a half? We'll give you three years at three and a half or something like that. Think we could do it? I think it's very possible Philadelphia could be the destination here. Um, but it's going to take some things to happen. I don't think it's the most likely necessarily, but I think it's very possible. The next one I like to go to, and every, I think people are going to boo through the screen when they see this. Uh, is the Winnipeg Jets. I'm just going to make sure you guys can see this. Yes, okay. Is the Winnipeg Jets. And now people are going to poo through the screen because they're like, why would he go to Winnipeg? Like cold Canadian small town Winnipeg. Uh, he's an American, but he's from Wisconsin. I mean, and he played in Minnesota that isn't really known for its sandy beaches all year round. You know what I'm saying? You know, and Winnipeg is just below Minnesota on the map. Go check it out. Um, so check, there's a lot of boxes that can be checked off here. One of them being they have $20 million in cap space. They don't have anybody really significant to sign for a while, actually, for a while. I wanted to talk about Philadelphia as well, just a little bit. Couturier and uh, those guys are going to have to be signed next year, which also muddles things up a little bit. But these, but Winnipeg has kind of signed up their players for quite a while here. Pierre Luc Dubois is he going to get much more than five? I don't think so. Not the way, unless he has an absolutely huge year. Um, yeah, like they're going to have to fill out their roster with some depth defensemen and stuff like that. But Ville Hinala, I don't think they want to play him in the top four next year for sure, at least not penciled in or markered in for sure. So a guy like Suter, for one, can help Ville Hinala a lot. Uh, he, They still have a solid team overall. Uh, that was the other thing about Philadelphia. Does he think he can win a cup with that team? They just missed the playoffs. In Winnipeg, with Hollabuck there and just crushing it, he could really think that his addition to this team could put them in cup contention status, especially if they sell them with 
the more cap space they have to even add some more to this lineup, maybe even another defenseman. So the value of being close to home, which appear, appears to be very uh, important to Suter is here. Um, the down points are, it is Winnipeg. If you've ever been there, it's not the sexiest city in the world, that's for sure. Okay, that's not, I'm from Edmonton. Still, it's not the sexiest city in the t in the world either. Uh, Edmonton and Winnipeg, if like with Duncan Keith with Edmonton that they just signed, if they get a phone call and somebody says, "So we have you know you know a next Norris Trophy winner wants to come to Edmonton," they're pretty excited. <laughs> it doesn't happen. They're getting free agents in these markets is tough. Okay. So, and they may think that as well. Minnesota is a bigger city. It has more kind of, uh, I guess you could say, a little more things to offer. It's more, there's more amenities. There's more restaurants and all that kind of stuff like that. So um, that could be a, a downside that they don't like. Maybe they're just, if we're going to move out of here, why go to someplace cold? Which would also take Philadelphia out of the running. Which brings me to my next one. How about familiar air, familiarity? Is that how you say it? Familiarity? Familiarity sounds good. Um, we got uh, Joe, Nashville Predators. Now go back to Nashville. Uh, I get, The first one that makes it difficult is, is it a cup contender? And I think that's going to be a big one on the list. He hasn't won a cup this year yet, Suter. So it could be big on the list. I'm sure it's big on the list. Do you think it's a cup contender? They're going to have to sell them on that, uh, I would think, for sure. There's a lot of things going to be changing in Nashville. It's going to be interesting to see what they decide to do. But if they can sell him on the package, it's possible, I suppose, that he could go there just because it's familiar. The, he lived there for a long time already. His, um, I'm not sure if his kids were born at that time, but they probably know a lot of people there, comfortable with the organization, all of those sort of things like that. Just for familiarity alone, it's possible. And they have space to sign. And they have projected cap space, $22 million. And they're looking to lose some cap space. The Poyle has said that he's willing to make a deal to lose, say, a Matt Duchesne. Maybe give him a pick or whatever. So they can reform this whole thing. Um, I guess the other part would be a problem is the spot. Um, Ekholm could move down to the third pairing, which would make them very strong. Um, as a left defenseman, it could make them very strong. Uh, I think they would be more looking for a right defenseman, but if Suter is available, I'll, I'm sure they'd be interested. I think it's possible. It just doesn't feel very likely. Another one that's come up in the discussions that I've had on Discord and everything and uh, is Colorado. Uh, that seems like a big one. Like, they're going to be all over them because they have cap space, they, he, you know, whatever the case may be. And I don't, I'm going to go over it real quick. The biggest problem I see here, and yes, they might lose Ryan Graves, but I think they'll probably find a home for Ryan if they have to lose him before they trade him. But it doesn't matter. They're still going to lose somebody there. But the fact of the matter is they really only have one right defenseman. And adding another left defenseman at $5 million to me just doesn't seem likely. I think if they – Colorado will have a pick of a lot of players to choose from. Uh, and probably more right defensemen out there that maybe even making less that could do what Ryan Suter does. So um, I don't think – I just doesn't feel like it's the place to me. I, I'm not going to talk more about it than that. Tell me what you think, but I'm not feeling it. Finally uh, – not finally, we got two more. New York Rangers is another one that's come up quite a bit. Their name comes up with just about anybody available right now, and for good reason – They've got a lot of young players that are blossoming right now. The New York Rangers can become great in a heart in a snap here. If Alexis Lafreniere, Capo Caco, uh, you know, if they really start to show, and especially Lafreniere last year, he was really looking solid in the in the second half. If they blossom up this year, and there's a good possibility that they will. Not to mention, of course, Adam Fox, Norris Trophy winner already at 23 years old. Uh, Ryan Lindgren with another year, who's a very underrated defensive defenseman. 
uh, Keandre Miller. And but the thing is, as I name these players, Keandre Miller was a second uh, was a second rookie All Star last year. He's going to be playing a lot. They're going to want to play him a lot. So where does Ryan Suter fit here? Does he fit in the third pairing role? Are you going to pay a $5 million a year to a third pairing guy? Uh, does he think that this is a cup contending team, really? It's a very green team. I have a feeling he's going to want to go somewhere more veteran-laden that have a pedigree for winning cups already. Uh, that's just my feeling. It is closer to Wisconsin, though. That's one of the big things for this. It's in New York. It's closer to Wisconsin. That could be a big plus. Finally, I'm going to go to the Boston Bruins. And it's a little further away from Wisconsin, but at least it's on the northeast. And the big thing about Boston that I like for Suter going there, it doesn't check off all the boxes. But one, the one big box it does check off is this is this could be a cup contending team, and not only could it be a cup contending team, it's more of a cup contending team with him on it. So he's going to have a sense of accomplishment and need and want in this organization. Boston will be all over this if they're not closing their window shut completely right now. Ryan Suter would be an awesome addition. They need defense really bad. They have some young guys. They let Chara go last year to see how they did, and they didn't do very well, <laughs> especially in the playoffs. I think their eyes have now woke up to the fact that they need to do something here. And Ryan Suter playing alongside Brandon Carlo is almost a first pairing right there. Close. But you've got Grizzlick and McAvoy that play that first pairing role. That is a fairly solid defense all of a sudden in Boston. They can, they have cap space, but they got a lot of work to do. Uh, where was it here? Was that, was I? Oh, yeah, right. Let me go back here. That's the depth chart. Their cap space is $25 million, okay? They've got to get possibly Taylor Hall signed, Krejci signed, and then Suter. And then next year, you've got the big Bergeron, which I don't think he's going to make much more than he did before. I think he can fit him in. Two years at $5 million, they can fit him in. $5 million. $5 million feels like the number here to me. Now, if there's a bidding war, who knows? He might go even higher than that. I'm not sure. But looking at all the teams that we just looked at here, most of them have to sign enough players that $5 million feels like the number. I think out of all of the ones we have here, Boston would be the best fit for a cup-winning team that really needs them. And it's a veteran team, which I think would help out a guy like Ryan Suter. One thing you need to know about Ryan Suter, he's not really that – leader kind of super leader type guy on the ice. He, he, he does it with his professionalism and how he acts on the ice and how hard he works and the time he puts in it. But he's a very private dude. He doesn't really hang out with people a lot. But the big thing also that is good with Boston is Boston loves family guys. They love family guys. And he is a big family guy. My thinking is that Boston's the one that nails it here on an outside chance that Winnipeg overpays for him and he decides to go to Winnipeg because it is closer to home. Uh, besides that, I don't see the other ones coming in, but I think they'll give her a good go. Anyways, that's my full 42. Tell me what you think. Where do you think Ryan Suter is going to go? Is there any teams that I met, didn't mention that you think he may go to? I had thoughts of maybe Florida, Tampa Bay, uh, you know, because they're like, uh, warm, maybe he wants to go somewhere warm all of a sudden. Uh, and Nashville would be up there too. That was a big one for Nashville as well. Tell me what you think. Those are my picks. That's my full 42, boys and girls. Thanks for hitting the subscribe and the bell. Have a great day. Okay, bye.